Good morning to all the participants. We are ready to start. This is the third strategy launch webinar that we are delivering in Latin America. Most of the participants are from South America today. And I want to explain before we start some housekeeping rules. There will be live interpretation to Spanish. This is available uh, via the bottom of your toolbar. You can see this at the right, at the bottom right uh, side of, of the screen. There you can select Spanish because the webinar will be in English. This session will be recorded and later we will share the recording plus the presentation. And if you have any question, please use the Q&A function. There you can write the question and at the end of the session, we will come back to this. And, um, and also if you have any technical problem, please use the chat session and, and we will be checking this and giving you support in case of any issues. My name is Miguel Hernandez. Sorry, I didn't introduce the beginning. My, uh, I am the regional director at Don Sucre for Latin America. And today we have also other colleagues joining this webinar, Nicolas Villar, Liz Foggy, and Livia Ignacio supporting this webinar. And the presentation will be delivered by our CEO, Daniel Morley. Daniel, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, Miguel. Okay, so um, thank you very much for joining us today to hear more about the new Bon Sucre strategy 2021 to 2026, which sets out our agenda for change to deliver more value to our members and our stakeholders and to make a bigger impact with sustainable sugarcane. Um, I'll spend the next um, 40 minutes or so trying to speak nice and slowly so the translator can um, do, her, do her job, um, taking you through some of the key highlights from our, our strategic plan. Um, it was developed collaboratively and very iteratively with inputs from many different stakeholders, uh, including um, our members, um, our staff, our technical advisory board, the Members' Council, and we had a very engaged board of directors who uh, participated in the strategy development from start to end. It took us many months and lots and lots of virtual meetings to get it right, and I think we have a strategic plan we can be proud of. And I'm very keen to hear your feedback um, at the end of this session in the Q&As. So starting at the beginning, we started the process with a baseline analysis and I will take you through some of the key highlights. We concluded that Bon Sucro had made really good progress over the last strategy period. We had grown our membership, we had strengthened our systems and we had achieved many of our goals. And we're proud that by now almost 5% of all sugarcane land around the world is certified to the Bon Sucro standard. We do have global reach now. We have certified mills in 19 countries, including in all the largest sugarcane origins in the Americas and Asia Pacific. We have a growing pool of committed buyers who collectively represent at least 20% of global sugar demand. And we have an increasing number of buyers from the new sectors, the bio, bio packaging, bioplastics, um, and also increasing coming from the run sector. So our reach provides us with a really strong foundation to go further in this strategy period and to address the more complex systemic issues that certification alone cannot solve. On the environment, we, um, we looked at our metrics and we know, and we published previously reports about the environmental benefits from Bon Sucre certification. 
uh, the production standard proves certified if you mills who are certified to the production standard mills and farms um, benefit significantly on environmental metrics for example the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions over time reduces by approximately 31 percent at farm level and 21 percent 20 percent at the mill level over the first four years of certification and over time certified producers see reductions in water use fertilizer use and herbicide use for example and we also know from a, a scientifically peer-reviewed paper that the global adoption of the bon sucrose standard would reduce ghg emissions from sugarcane um, by half and it would reduce water use by 65 percent and nutrient loading by 34 percent on the social side um, we can celebrate the progress made on social standards and um, respect for labor and human rights as a result of certification and also as a result of the fact that the Bon Sucro Code of Conduct now commits all of our members to respect human rights. But we want to help our, major, our members achieve even more, uh, even greater improvements, and we want to engage with the wider sugarcane sector to share our learnings. Um, you can see on the slide there some key data around improvements in wages, improvements in health and safety for workers. On production and uptake, we know that there's an increased volume of certified sugarcane on the market. And that, of course, means there's an increased um, amount of impacts. Um, bon Sucro certified sugar production has reached 6.2 million tonnes. Bon Sucro certified ethanol reached 2.7 million metric tonnes from those 121 certified mills in 19 countries. And yes, Brazil still dominates, producing approximately 75% of Bon Sucre certified sugar, but we are seeing now this pull through from uh, a bigger range of countries. And buyers are also purchasing more Bon Sucre products than ever before, but we still have a rate of supply and demand at around 20%, and we want to help increase that. We also know from economic evaluation and research that we have done, we've done a recent business case study in Brazil, for example, which we published a few months ago. And we can see from that independent uh, economic evaluation that the cost benefit ratio of uh, Bon Sucro certification does exist. Um, and we want to build on those lessons and continue to improve and create value for the producers. We also looked at the Bon Sucro positioning globally. We are the only sugarcane sustainability initiative that combines all of those characteristics. We have an exclusive focus on sugarcane. We have the credibility of being ICL code compliant around our standard system. We have this focus on continuous improvement. We have global reach. And we also have local presence with our staff and with our members. We are proudly multi-stakeholder in our membership and in our governance. And we've taken this broader role as a platform for change beyond certification. So then coming to the global context, we researched the global context and examined those most material trends impacting Bon Sucro over this period. As you know, we're living through a very dynamic and urgent times where government and society are collectively failing to make sufficient urgent progress on the global goals for sustainability and on climate action. And, but thankfully, despite the deep disruption of COVID-19, the global drive for more sustainable supply chains continues across all the key sectors and including in our sectors, uh, the food and drinks and fuels and packaging. We also know that financing sustainable growth and the transition to a decarbonized and climate resilient economy will be an overarching theme for investors over the coming period. The UN estimated 
$1.3 trillion was invested in sustainable development last year, and those investment flows are expected to recover, um, but there is still a significant financing gap. Meeting at least minimum safeguards on human rights and social standards will become increasingly important for the private sector. And for the first time, ESG issues are now moving beyond those core reputation and supply chain resilience risks to now becoming core commercial, financial and legal compliance risks. Governments, include, most notably in Europe, but elsewhere, are now moving to regulate around um, supply chains to make supply chains more responsible. In Europe, that we have the EU Green Deal, which will impact on supply chains into the European Union beyond the European borders. And we're seeing this as a, as a growing trend around the world. We also looked at production and consumption data into the sugar market, ethanol market, and we looked into the biofuel, biomaterial, and bioplastic market trends. Sugar will continue to account for most of the end usage of sugarcane, but we do expect to see considerable growth for sustainable sugarcane in those newer market segments um, where sugarcane is used as an ingredient, as a derivative into the bio-based economy. What does this mean for bon sucro? Well, we took all of the background data sets around the global goals, investment, the environment, technology, social and labor, and the, the sugarcane value chains. Um, we, did, we looked at our desk research, we looked at our interviews and our consultations, and we, we took it into the key inputs for our strategy. We really want to make sure that Bon Sucro <clears throat> remains relevant and purposeful over the next period, uh, whilst delivering value to all of our members and building an adaptable and resilient and data-driven organization. So I will now introduce you to our overarching strategic framework, and then I will go into more detail on what it all means. The strategy is built around a newly defined purpose statement at the heart of that, those circles. To collectively accelerate the sustainable production and uses of sugarcane. And then supporting our purpose statement are the three strategic aims in the next circle. Those strategic aims are to improve the environmental impact of sugarcane, um, to promote respect for human rights and decent work in sugarcane farming and milling, and to create more value. Those three strategic aims are interdependent and non-hierarchical of one another. Uh, we're very clear that they are all equally important and they all mutually reinforce one another into a system of change. For each strategic aim, we have set some objectives, targets, and indicators. And I will take you through those. Then implementation will be designed around those five uh, key strategic priorities in the light blue circle, um, delivered through six activity work streams in the green circle and underpinned by those core principles in orange. So moving on to our core principles, we have four core principles, collaboration, inclusivity, credibility and adaptability. Why did we choose those principles? Well, collaboration is central to our identity as a multi-stakeholder platform and collaboration is very important to the way we work with our members and also internally with one another. We want to be and we need to be inclusive to drive wider sector transformation beyond certification via strategic partnerships. And we also want to build a more inclusive, and diverse, sustainable supply chain and bon sucro. While credibility is fundamental to the way we, we govern and operate our standard system, 
And as a small and medium sized enterprise, adaptability is part of our organizational strength. We learn and continuously strive to improve and become resilient to change. So moving on to those three strategic aims, I will take you through create value in the supply chain. We know that certification delivers an array of benefits, but we also know that the rigor and cost of certification is a barrier for many mills and farms, particularly smallholders. And yes, there is growing commitment from buyers, but the uptake is still too low to generate a return on investment for all of the certified producers. So we want to work to create more value for farms and mills across the supply chain, but also to create more value for our buyer members and end users, as well as others with a stake in the, um, in the supply chain in making the sector more sustainable. So that means governments, investors and civil society. Our key objectives in this strategic aim are to increase the supply and demand of certified sustainable sugar, ethanol and other derivatives, to, be, to, to, to create more inclusive and sustainable value chains, to convene more impact and innovation projects and to deliver more value to our members. The next strategic aim, improve the environmental impact of sugarcane. So we know that environmental issues are a high priority for our members and partners, many of whom have very specific commitments to reducing the negative impacts or improving through regenerative agriculture, water replenishment, etc. We also know that in order to meet the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, all sectors, all agricultural sectors, must play their leadership role on reducing greenhouse gas emissions and the sugarcane sector needs to play its role. So we want to support our members to reduce greenhouse gas emissions via certification and to facilitate the wider sugarcane sector to take collective actions to address the climate emergency and develop sectoral greenhouse gas reduction pathways in line with the Paris Agreement. We will partner with others to address the water crisis and key origins by developing and piloting policies and plans to manage water more responsibly and equitably. And our other objective in this aim is to protect biodiversity and soil health and to promote regenerative agriculture. And our third strategic aim is to strengthen human rights and decent work. We know there is a growing spotlight on social and labor conditions in global supply chains and an increasing degree of corporate due diligence in this area. Unfortunately, much of the world's sugarcane is grown in countries with less than optimal agricultural working conditions. And the Bon Sucre standard provides a framework for producers to improve and certification enables certified members to reduce their risk and to keep pace with the market, regulatory, investment and consumer demands. So on this strategic aim, we want to drive decent work and safer working conditions for farmers and workers, including a zero tolerance on forced labor and child labor that's enshrined within our standard. We want to ensure safer recruitment for migrant workers and reduce discrimination in all its forms and promote gender equality. And we want to promote fairer wages for the lowest paid people in farming and milling through piloting living wages in specific origins, uh, working collectively with willing members and partners. We can also drive fairer wages through our certification, through our standard and through certification. So moving to our five strategic priorities, I will take you through what we think is important to achieve our aims. Enhancing Bon Sucre standard system is going to be and remain a strategic priority for Bon Sucre. It is our core business 
and we will use the next five years to continue to strengthen and innovate our system of third party assurance. We will finalize and publish the new Bon Sucre production standard. We will update the smallholder standard to be in line with the new production standard, but also adapted to the realities of smallholder farming and taking into account lessons learned from implementing the smallholder standard over the last few years. We want to update our chain of custody and our claims rules. We want to strengthen social auditing and assurance. Um, and we want to partner with compatible standards and initiatives so we can make a bigger impact if we align and benchmark with others, both on the market side and on the production side. But in terms of alignment, in terms of benchmarking, we want to focus on those bigger strategic partnerships where we can make a bigger impact. For example, we're developing a memorandum of understanding um, with the Brazilian government to start a process of alignment between Bon Sucro and the Brazilian Renovo Bio scheme. And we will look for other similar opportunities to grow the market for Bon Sucro certification, particularly see new opportunities in the emerging carbon space. In line with our principles to be more inclusive, uh, we're going to develop a stepwise approach to Bon Sucro certification to help scale up, bon Sucre, to scale up su uh, sustainable sugarcane production. Um, in recent years, we started to invest more in impact projects and convene impact projects. And we're going to build that up in this strategy period to channel greater investment to the continuous improvement of growers and mills. We have the ambition to grow impact funding to over 7 million US dollars over the strategy period. And this will be financed through our credit trading platform. And we, we want to leverage additional financing through grants. And we want to expand our technical support to members and intend to facilitate more access to certification data and metrics that can enable, for example, the facilitation of new finance green finance to support certified mills through the provision of um, metrics that financial institutions are asking for, for their due diligence. And as part of our commitment to creating value and building supply and demand, we are going to prioritize the market development into new sectors. We're talking here about the rum and bio-based sectors. Um, as well, of course, as the traditional sugar sectors in those big consumer markets of Europe and, and, and North America, but increasingly look into middle income countries with large consumer markets um, in the Americas and in Asia. We see good opportunities for our metric standard where Bon Sucro could become an acceptable standard uh, for compliance by governments and by financial institutions. And we also will be developing our Bon Sucro credit trading platform. We have good proof of concept. Uh, the platform's working well, but we're going to be reviewing it and seeing what can we do to improve it uh, and promote it with buyers to try and drive uptake of Bon Sucro credits. So I've spoken about our ambitions to play a more significant convening role for the whole sugarcane sector. And we want to build our capabilities to deliver on that, um, capitalizing on our leverage as a network and the knowledge that we have. We want to focus on those complex systemic issues where we all need to work together collectively, um, working in partnerships to innovate, to set joint targets uh, and action plans and really push the agenda on climate action, on water, on social and labor conditions, and specifically looking into heat stress, migrant labor, living wages, and gender equality. And then underpinning all of that, uh, we are going to be investing in promoting knowledge, best practice, and innovation through improved monitoring and evaluation, through unlocking new value from our data, doing better analytics, 
supporting our members with analytics about certification data uh, and supply chain mapping to provide those shareable metrics and continuing to contribute to collaborative research partnerships. Where if you have a chance to read our strategy, it's available on our website. Uh, we have it available in Spanish. Um, we have a long form and a short form. So I encourage you, you'll get a link after this uh, presentation to the documents. When you have a chance to read it, you'll see there's another chapter uh, called Making It Happen, where we go into more detail into how we will bring those strategic priorities forward. Um, I won't be going into those today, I just have a couple of, of headline slides to show you uh, about the Making It Happen chapter uh, and the sections on certification, impact projects, membership development, market development, digi digitalization and data, and communications and influencing. So this so far, so it's been a global presentation. Uh, just to also let you know, we will be retaining our global headquarters in London, but we will also be growing our regional teams and our regional capacity to deliver in those origins, particularly in Asia Pacific and the Americas. Um, and our work in key origins will be consistent with our strategic plan. Um, but of course it will be tailored to the national context. There's some priorities that have been identified in the strategic plan and more will be developed as our operating plans are elaborated and as we have further discussions with our stakeholders. We also have been clear that we don't want to spread ourselves too thin and we will be focusing on key origins where we have a good footprint and where we think we can make the most contribution. Um, so we have some provisional objectives um, to share with you today for South America to create more value for certification, sorry, from certification for producers, to increase the number of certified mills and also increase the scope of certification. So more land is grown under Bon Sucro certification to have a greater environmental impact. We want to really maximize the contribution to the reduction of greenhouse gases, to water, to water and on to um, protecting and maintaining high conservation value landscapes. Um, we want to do more convening of impact projects to support farmers and millers with continuous improvements and with their journey to, towards on sustainability. And we want to convene these collective actions that contribute to the strategic objectives to address these big challenges on climate action, on water and on labour rights. And so to meet our ambitions, um, we have to grow Bon Sucro. Our ambition is to double the size of the organisation over five years, uh, including much needed capacities in the, at the regional level, in our operating systems, in our data and analytical work, communications policy and in project funding. And we'll, we'll do this through um, growing the membership and increasing our income um, from membership by identifying new strategic partnerships and grants and income through our credit trading. So in summary, we will continue to support you, our members, we will continue to only work on sugarcane and its value chains to be very focused on making an impact and a contribution towards the sustainable development goals. We want to maintain our governance structures. We think they're working well. Of course, some always room for improvements. And we will continue to deliver our internationally recognized credible Bon Sucro standard. We want to strengthen our creating value proposition we want to focus on climate change and water and biodiversity. We want to strengthen our contribution on human rights and decent work, improve our support for smallholders, do bring more money in through invest in new partnerships, um, build the market, the market demand for Bon Sucro products, 
continue to work on our digitalization and our monitoring and evaluation frame um, processes and to build our capacity to be more visible so we can be more influential um, and engaged. So that concludes my presentation. Um, as you can see, we really want to make a bigger impact. Um, we do believe in the future of Bon Sucre certification. Um, and we also are going to be spreading out to convene the sector and to create to become a force for change, working with our members and with partners to address some of those, those critical issues. Um, we can't do it uh, by ourselves and we invite you on the journey with us. So thank you. That concludes the, the presentation. We now have time for questions. Thank you, Daniel, for explaining what the new strategy for Sucre is about. We don't have questions, but the, for the participant, this is the time. If you have any question, uh, you can send it through the Q&A. Meanwhile, um, just to comment that uh, the, 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 launch, the launching of, of the strategy is just the beginning. There will be more activities and you are invited. We are sharing our agenda in our website. So please feel free to register and receive the newsletter. There you can receive more information about what Bonsucre is doing, uh, how uh, we can work together. Uh, we are organizing webinars um, in cooperation, coordination with other organizations. So there is an active agenda. And also there will be uh, the public consultation of the new standard. That's a different subject, but uh, this is coming and you all are invited. Daniel, it seems everything was clear. Perfect. That's good. Oh, oh there is one. There is one coming. Ah, I see. Uh, okay, it said that during the presentation, it was mentioned that uh, it will um, there it will be a, a reduction of thirty percent on emission, and uh, asking if this emission is linked to an emission factor. So, in other words, mm -hmm. uh, the thirty percent emission if this is linked to an emission factor. Okay. Um, I think I might ask Nicholas to respond to the emission factor technical point. Yes, thank you and thank you for your question. So the reduction that we observe uh, has many factors and every producers will have their own journey and uh, story behind the reduction of emissions. We see uh, the reduction coming from reduction in use of diesel, and we have a good strong case uh, demonstrating that through the achievements in the Brazilian mill. We see as well uh, emissions reduction coming from land use change, uh, which are the two main posts uh, explaining uh, reductions uh, of the major bulk of uh, reduction of emissions. But each mill will have, and producers and farmers will have their own uh, journey, as I was mentioning, uh, where uh, a reduction of fertilizers might be as well uh, a huge input into the reduction. Thank you, Nicholas, and I hope that answered the question. If not, uh, we can continue the discussion. And there is a comment here. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I, I thought it was very logical and clear. Thank you for this feedback. Thank you. I don't see more questions, Daniel. Okay, that's fine. We've had a nice uh, intimate group today. This is, this is one of several webinars we've done. Um, so thanks everybody for your time. Um, and as Miguel said, you know, we're at the start of a five year plan and it's going to be, it's collective, it's going to be collaborative. So we will definitely be engaging, um, engaging you again. Oh, there has some, another question. Yes, yes. It said where these reductions recorded per ton of sugar produced or where they are absolute reduction. 
It's about if uh, the, I guess it's, it's, it's a continuation of the previous yeah. one about GAG reduction, if recorded yeah. per ton of sugar produced or absolute reduction. So the, those reductions that I presented there, that's a global average um, that we have based on the certification data that we have in hand. And it was a reduction over a time period. Nicholas, would you like to add? Yes, I was going to add that this uh, evaluation was done. So as Daniel mentioned, with the collections and analysis of data we collect through the certification process and the uh, reduction is expressed per ton of uh, sugar produced or ton of ethanol produced. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And no more open questions, Daniel. So I think... Um, That's fine. That's good. If no more question, we can call to an end. To the webinar, Danielle. Absolutely, thank you. And of course, we're here. If you have anything, once you've had a chance to uh, look at the strategic, I do recommend that you uh, do look at the strategic plan. As I said, it's in in Spanish, which will probably be more accessible for you as well. Then just reach out, uh, and I'm really keen to to get your feedback and etc. So thanks everybody, and have a lovely rest of your day. <laughs>